Hello, and welcome to Live from the Gardens, a Phantomorph podcast about animals and how to be a convincing anamorph. This week, we'll be talking about the caterpillar and the butterfly, arguably the same animal, but we did see both of them in Animorphs number 19, The Departure, which is the book we talked about last week on the Dork Bajir Chronicles. My name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden, and I'm just beginning to curl up in my fleshy pupae. You mean cocoon? Do you mean cocoon? It's also known as a pupa. Yeah, pupa is pretty accurate. No, pupa is the baby. It's also known as a chrysalis. That's a larva. No, that's a larva, yeah. Oh, dip. Already, Brayden's racking up points. (laughs) Okay, Okay. in my defense, Mm, I'm extremely mm. high on life right now. That's true. Uh, I've noticed just that. out uh, here living life. And Tessa, why are you pretending? Your mom doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Hi, we, mom. Uh, Appreciate your every weekly vis- listen. We have one piece of fan mail, which is actually two, but it's pretty much one. Fan mail! Ooh, yeah. Fan mail! Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So a while ago, uh, Seward All on Twitter uh, linked us into a gif. I don't know if you guys have seen this gif, but it's like a hawk standing outside a glass patio door, and it's kind of standing around like it's uh, waiting to get in, essentially. Oh, I and, have uh, seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the film from yeah. the point of view of someone inside the house. Inside? Yeah. And she said, it's Tobias trying to get a human family to adopt his emo ass. <laughs> Which I do agree with that because if you look at him at one point, he opens his mouth and is like, <laughs> <laughs> the most like bitch ass looking face. Um, and on the same note of real hawks reminding us of Tobias, um, at Tiger Wolf on Twitter linked us to uh, a tweet by the last dog bird, and it was a it just kind of like a front shot of a hawk, specifically a red tailed hawk. I've seen a red tailed hawk, yeah. If you guys have seen, like, just look up pictures of, like, birds of prey from the front, and they look a thousand times less intimidating. It's so (laughs) Yeah, he looked very surprised. He was just, like, surprised and sad and scared. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. In the books, he's described as having such a, like, defiant face. And I'm like, if only they saw him in any other angle besides profile. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Pretty good. Anyways, thanks for the shout outs, you guys. Keep them coming. Uh, Thank you. Let's jump right. Yes. Thanks, Braden. I like <laughs> hearing everybody shout out. The thank, thank you. you. Tessa, do you have a thank you? I ah, do have a thank you. There it is. All right. Let's jump right into it. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do it. Caterpillar. Ooh. Fun fact. If you just Google the word caterpillar, 90% of the results are caterpillar like the tractor company. Really? Or like heavy vehicle. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like caterpillar in slang for something else, like a caterpillar sweater or like a style of knitting or cake or something. Yeah. Such a disgusting okay. level of search engine optimization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. First question. This is for Brayden. You ready? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. Most caterpillars are herbivorous, but there are a few caterpillars who eat other animals or animal, you know, Obviously not entire animals, but mm-hmm. parts of animals. Maybe entire animals. What does the horn moth caterpillar eat? Well, I mean, I've only ever known one, and it actually just ate my dad. So I assume <laughs> oh, no, it eats so dads? Sorry. Then your dad must be a goat. Wow. Because he is. <laughs> he horn is, moth though. caterpillars. That's weird, you, right? You know, you know, uh, you know goat man? Mm-hmm. I'm That's goat man. Oh, you're goat boy, I thought. <laughs> no, he's a man now. <laughs> Don't you, didn't you listen to last week's episode, Mikhail? Hey. His testicles dropped when he found out about oh, the chrysalis. Yeah. Listen, my father was goat man. You can call me goat boy. Anyways, <laughs> uh, the the horn moth caterpillar eats the bones and hooves of ungulates. Do you guys remember what ungulates are? Yeah, they're hooved animals. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. With so like, like, not like you know. horses, but with the cloven hoof. So like deer and goats. And sheep. I think that's right? right. I can't remember if it's cloven or not, but it's definitely <laughs> hoof, hooved animal. Uh, so yeah, you're a goat boy. Confirmed. So wait, so they Tessa. don't eat the flesh. They just eat the bones. Bones and hooves. That's Ooh, right. So the keratin. Yeah. Nasty. But wow. Nice. That's hot shit. So Tessa, the Arctic woolly bear moth can live in extreme cold uh, down to minus 70 Celsius, which 
I will tell you right now what that is in Fahrenheit. That's like some bullshit in Fahrenheit. God damn. I would die in minus 70. Which is minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my god. <sighs> um, what is the main tactic that they use to survive these temperatures? They crawl right inside a polar bear's asshole. Oh shit. Did you do your research? I thought you weren't like... No, I kind of dude, I just know a lot about up. caterpillars. Google fingers. <laughs> Google fingers. <laughs> Braden is starting like a side YouTube channel just called Google fingers. Google fingers. <laughs> okay, so they use something called diapause. Do you guys remember what diapause is? No. Did we uh, learn okay, about di- diapause? Well, <laughs> yeah, we totally did. I have about some diapause. stories about diapause. But, well, but, those are diaphragms. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry. No. <laughs> Diapause is a it's a form of like sort of fake hibernation. Oh where yes, I've heard of this. Don't frogs do this? And they like mm-hmm. kind of just like really slow down their heart rate. I guess the woolly because bugs don't really have a heart rate per se, but they'll just like slow everything right down to almost death. Do you know where a lot of animals do their hi- diapods? In hibernaculums, <gasps> bringing it back to Silverwing. Bringing it back to Silverwing. <laughs> Anyways, um, so anyways, they do diapause for the majority of the year. They're only up for like, I don't know, a couple of months, basically. The thing about these caterpillars, and again, that's the Arctic woolly bear moth caterpillar, uh, they can stay caterpillars for up to 15 years before they turn into moths. They can that's live 15 years? Yeah. And they can live more than 15 years. Well, just a little bit longer because once they turn into moths, <laughs> I'm like pretty sure they die after. that year. That's why yeah. they stay as a caterpillar for so long because they know it's not yeah. worth it. Live it up, die young. Um, Brayden, mm. what, what is the biggest threat to humans that is like f- like from caterpillars? Like, what? It, How do caterpillars most present a threat to humans? I don't mean on a global scale. Mm. I mean on like a, interacting with a caterpillar. Like on a personal level, what is like your greatest threat? <laughs> Yeah, um, emotional tactics. Yeah. So, I mean, your average your average caterpillar is a is just an unapologetic sex pervert, um, <laughs> and they it's it's actually rather depressing. Um, they are, you know, John Wayne Gacy was a caterpillar, a closet caterpillar, mm-hmm. and every single caterpillar, well kidnaps and and then murders young men and women just like john wayne gacy did wow. murder that's your murder answer? Okay. caterpillars okay. murder okay. people that is quite a threat um i think you know that that's 100 percent true it's yes. making a murder season two it was a caterpillar it's society's fault really um okay though the truth is a uh, caterpillar's have the, their biggest threat comes from the hair so i'm sure a lot of you out there it's have just seen caterpillars. really irritating like have you ever had a roommate tell <laughs> me so about tragic. it right it's all stuck in the drain yeah no the truth is a lot of their hair is venomous actually Ooh. and can cause something called keratoconjunctivitis, conjunctivitis oh. which is just keratin and conjunctivitis being and conjunctivitis pink eye rates as an infection um but i did read in the wikipedia article that there are recorded fatalities from coming into contact with caterpillars. So, yeah, I guess if you like choke on it. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what Or if you that have like an allergy sense. maybe. <laughs> I mean, some of uh, them are probably poisonous, but probably not a lot. They're venomous, Tessa? Holy shit. Yeah, th- I mean like some of them are also poisonous in the sense that they will bite you and you will die. Mikhail. Nope, poisonous Mikhail. means if you eat them. If you eat them, you die. Well, that's what I meant. We went over this. Yeah. Anyways. The walnut sphinx moth, caterpillar, has a very unique way of defending against predators. Tessa, what is that defense mechanism? It uh, quick evolves into cocoona without needing any prior leveling, and then just uh-huh. uses harden seven times in a row. Uh, and the smart. speed smart. is very fast on the walnut sphinx moth cocoona, um, so it automatically goes first, and then no move will hit because not only it has a special type of harden because it's Mm -hmm. um part fairy type once it evolves into kakuna so that uh its evasion goes up as well as its defense 
I wish I knew more about Pokemon so that I could shut you down so hard about your <laughs> fairy classifications and stuff. The real answer is that when they're aggravated, touched, whatever, they actually make like a whistling noise. Well, it's described as a whistling what? noise, but it's really, it's kind of like somebody puckering up for a giant smooch where it's like, <laughs> kind and of. And this is supposed to uh, make people not want to go near it? That's right. Yeah. It's supposed to scare off birds and stuff like that. <laughs> Caterpillars uh, don't know anything. Yes, it's like whistling. a really polite fart. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, so fascinating. Caterpillars are wild. If you haven't noticed, I've been calling on like a bunch of different caterpillars. Yeah, here. and the, ant, the the reason is because there are certain things that are universal for caterpillars, but it's the stuff you know already. Like, yeah. hey, they eat leaves. Shocker. Or they <laughs> make cocoons. Which, by the way, they don't. They make chrysalids. Moth caterpillars make cocoons. Moths are the ones that that make was the cocoons. answer to a later question. Shit. <laughs> Um. <laughs> anyways, the last question goes to this will be Brayden again. So there's one species of caterpillar that is considered, generally considered, to be the only truly domesticated insect on the entire planet. Which species is that, and why <laughs> is it considered this? Well, let me tell you about the cuckapillar. <laughs> it's Jesus a big Christ. old bitch, and it has no spine. And it probably voted third party. And it doesn't want a MAGA. <laughs> and, uh, and pulling it all together. Cl- thinks climate change is real. And uh, I don't know. I like a MAGA um, is like a verb. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know that many more talking points that like people would call a cuckapillar would say. So yeah, you, <laughs> the joke, the joke ended when I said cuckapillar. I think, yeah, the joke was good. over at that point. I do like the sound of that word. No, the real answer is the Bombyx mori, uh, commonly known as the silkworm, which turns into the silk moth. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's almost entirely, well, I would say it is pretty much entirely dependent on humans on a global scale to survive. I I had a hard time finding like where silkworms exist in the wild. But the reasoning, obviously, is that like... We want that dank, dank silk. So yep. we just domesticated the shit out of them. Yeah. And they're like totally white because they don't need camouflage anymore because it's basically been bred out of them. Also, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that the moths like can't breed because of like just genetic deficiencies. So humans like hold them up against each other. And oh, fuck. no. <laughs> Something like that. I can't, it's not oh, their exact man. detail. We're just but... their sex pillows. I, I, Did you know that the whole reason like China had the monopoly on silk until like one or two guys smuggled five little silkworms out of China along the path that is now known as the Silk Road. The Silk Road. Yep. Mm. I That's did not actually know that. That's history for you. That's a little, that's a little fun hi- f- history that's fact a little for fun you. history fact. Uh, okay, so that wraps up sort of the caterpillar portion. So let's get into the And butterflies. I guess we already know how they have sex. Humans hold them together. <laughs> that's so yeah, sad. Yeah, all of them. It's crazy. It's a task force of humans. Kisses at night. This is for Tessa. Butterflies use a defense mechanism called aposematism. What does this word mean, and how do butterflies use it? A posetimism uh, means to strike (laughs) an intimidating pose. So what Uh they do is they just walk, walk, pose. And that pose makes them look for a split second like a much larger predator. It's like they cast a very short major image just for a second. Or like how Shade did with the sound pictures in Silverwing. Um, Very large predator will fear, like a bird will come down and they go walk, walk, pose. And then suddenly, oh no, there's no butterfly. It's just a fucking bear. And when they pose, you just hear Madonna in the background like, strike pose. It's Vogue. No, Let no takers on the Madonna reference. The I mean, <laughs> to the <laughs> too easy, eh. too easy, Brady. Madonna, yeah. Madonna isn't relevant. <laughs> mm, you're pretty true. That's pretty true. So, aposematism, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong, is actually warning coloration. So, mm. when you see butterflies, like you don't see it too obviously in North America, as far as I know, anyways. But you definitely see it around the world. Uh, One very cool example of this that I found was the peacock butterfly, which is the scientific name is Agleio, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong also. But if you Google it and kind of like, like, don't look at it super close, look at it from a bit of a distance. uh, And 
it fucking looks like two eyes staring at you. It's terrifying. And that's all I can see when I look at it. I highly recommend uh, well, wait, what was it any called again? listeners. It's called a peacock butterfly. You kind of have to find a good specimen because they don't all look exactly like eyes. Oh, yeah. I ones, see what you mean, though. I've yeah. seen these guys before. There's yeah. a moth that looks similar to this guy. I'm There's sure there some is. pretty derpy eyes, but yeah. Yeah, you got to find like, like ones and like, you really have to stand back. Honestly, it looks look like a cat it. that they would uh, superimpose on the inside cover of a Megan Morphs book. Yeah. <laughs> True. Or um, just like the cover of a Warrior Cats book. <laughs> I love Warrior Cats. So, Brayden. Yeah. What, what physical structure of the butterflies gives it the color? Well, of course, Mikhail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The butterfly gets its colors from God. Oh, the tension. Oh, God <laughs> personally visits every butterfly and she paints them. Oh by hand. my God. Look at that. Fucking she. Dropping the she. Good job. This is nice. a very progressive podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the real answer, because let's face it, God is never the real answer. Whoa. Controversial. Oh, you coming for me, Mikhail? You coming for me for this? <laughs> no, you've got the religious. We're sort of the animorphs, but in three people, where like we've got every single type of personality <laughs> trait. You've got religious and poor comedic timing. <laughs> hey. Brayden has oh. resembles a goat, and I have um, general disdain. For most things. <sighs> okay, physical structure. Okay, the wings of a butterfly are covered with tiny scales yep. that get their color from melanins, so which is just like the thing that gives humans their skin color, uric acid, which is pea acid essentially, and what they call microstru- microstructures on the scales. I'm looking which at God reflect right light. now. I'm mm-hmm. looking at God right now, and she is very embarrassed by you. She she would be blushing if she was white. Yeah. I mean, oh, like... Oh, <laughs> nice. I just got that. Good job. Um, We're kay. the most progressive podcast on the web. We are officially the most progressive podcast on the web now with two... <laughs> because we... No other podcast is, has the guts to they, say that they don't have the God themselves stand up and talk is a to non-white God. woman. I mean, uh, I'm sure another podcast. <laughs> not said another Animorphs podcast. Oh, true. Maybe that's true. That's some, We're the only Animorphs podcast that's with got a two really men weird religious and a bent. woman. <laughs> We're the only Animorph podcast with two men, a woman, who release every Monday who are called the Dork Pajir Chronicles, who have ever talked about this. First. <laughs> hashtag first. Hashtag uh, like first. Can you hand you me some hey. water? I'm dying of first. <laughs> Fuck off. That's too good. That's very good. Um, So have you guys ever, like, touched a butterfly's wings before? Uh, I have no, because you're not because... supposed to because it makes them hard, unable to fly because they got those R- scales. Right, but... uh. I mean, they're dead already when I've touched them <gasps> because I've killed them. No, I'm just kidding. They got stuck on like like the grill of your car and shit. Yeah. Anyways, if you if you brush their wing, it, actually, it's like a powder I, that comes off, kind of. Well, that's a um, little scale. That's pretty dope. Go. And when what's left behind is just like transla- uh, transparent, almost on the wing. I mean. Anyways, this is very dead airish. So, <laughs> Tessa, what is visually different between the pupa of a butterfly versus the pupa of a? I know this one actually. At least I yeah, think weird. I do. The um the pupa of a moth, a cocoon, looks more like a wasp nest almost. Like it looks more gray and like flaky and hard. Whereas the chrysalis looks more like uh like you can kind of see butterfly wings in it. Like it looks flat yeah. and it, I don't know. It's a more weird oblong shape for us like rounder. That's my best guess. So you're not totally wrong, actually. That was very close. So nice. butterfly and this is just more like a nomenclature thing, but like butterfly chrysalids are not covered in a cocoon. Does that make That's sense? The thing, so yeah. Whereas a the moth's... moth is covered in a cocoon and then it like transforms inside of it, right? Right. So they're both in chrysalids, if I'm understanding this right. And then people listening, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe both moths and butterflies are inside chrysalids. It's just that butterflies don't cover themselves with silk. 
which is what a cocoon is. Yeah. Right. When I was growing up, I saw a lot of these cocoons and I didn't realize, I thought they were butterflies, but I didn't realize until I grew up that they were actually, well, let's be fair. I didn't realize until I researched this live from the gardens <laughs> that those were all moths and not butterflies at wow. all. Also, as a kid, and I don't know if this is a weird like judgment call, but like I always thought moths were worse than butterflies, just generally speaking. Is that a shared uh, thing? I, I think I kind of got, had the same feeling. I know I liked the look of moths. I was uh, a like, I, fan I didn't of have it for very long because I liked the look of mm. moths because um, they had the fuzzy antenna, which I liked better. Also, shout out to moths on Twitter. <laughs> right? Yeah. He's friend of the show. He's a whole moths box of are these far guys. better built than butterflies. Moths are, yeah. Then they're yeah. better, like, they're better at tweeting. They're better at writing. They're just, they're very good. Yeah, totally. And fuck butterflies. So, <laughs> Brayden, some, some butterfly species will migrate during the colder months. Yeah. Which species has the longest migration pattern? Well, uh, this is actually the, um, the, 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 uh, I- evol- impupate, uh, it is the butterfly that pupates from the caterpillar. The, uh, the, the, <laughs> but the cucker fly, um, mm. it, re- it, it migrates so far because <laughs> fucking, they think they're getting away from global warming, man. And then they go somewhere else and they realize the weather hasn't changed because global warming doesn't exist, but they're so entrenched in their ways that they need to fly north <laughs> again. Fucking, and they just, it's literally a never ending migration pattern. And also, they want to take my guns. <laughs> I was thinking butter cucks might actually be better. Oh my Cucker God. Flies is Stop not better. Both but of this. Butter cucks is funny. Stop butter cucks. Both of this. I'm That's so actually... out of it. The real answer is the monarch butterfly because the monarch butterfly will travel from Canada all the way to Mexico because I saw that in a documentary. Yeah. So actually, just to get back on topic here, when a ring of buttercucks flies in oh a circle, God. it's just called a buttercuck ring. Uh, anyways, the real answer is actually not the monarch butterfly, although it is definitely the most popular <gasps> no! answer to that question. But recently wrong. they found out they found out that there was a butterfly called the British Painted Lady, which is a very fucking fancy name and I love it. Yeah. They actually travel from tropical Africa to the Arctic Circle. Oh my god, which, what? Which is 9,000 miles round trip, or that's about 14 and a half thousand kilometers. And uh, lasts roughly six generations mm-hmm. of butterfly. Because obviously they have to, they can't live wow. that long, so they have to stop and whatever. Anyways, take that monarch butterflies. Okay, yeah, crazy, crazy story that I know. <laughs> There's a troop of monarch butterflies that flies across, uh, I think, Lake Superior, one of the Great Lakes, and they'll just mm-hmm. fly straight, and then they'll bank hard west for a couple of miles, and then keep oh. flying straight south. And it bothered scientists for a really long time. They didn't know why they were doing this until they looked back in history. There used to be a mountain right in the middle of that lake, so the butterflies just have this, like, cult, like this biological memory of flying around the mountain in the middle wow. of the lake. Wow, where'd you hear that? I read it on the internet. Interesting. Did you know that you've already told us that story like three times? No, I told that story! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. This is the first time it's come up. It's fresh information. All oh, right. One. Tessa. Yes. I'm Butterflies. Seething. I'm fucking yeah, seething are. right now. What a buttercuck. Butterflies have a g- <laughs> good sense of taste. But their mouths, aka mandibles, are underdeveloped or absent even in certain species. So how do they taste stuff? They taste it with their antenna and their feet and their great big flapping clitoris. Nice. I like how you tried to turn it into a joke at the end. Th- no, it's, sort of. it's not a joke. It's true. The whole, bo- like the whole bottom body part is just all clitoris. Hmm. I have no quirky response to that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, the truth is, you're right. It is their feet and their antennas. I don't know if their antennas have taste receptors, but their feet definitely do. And they actually have palps. I don't know if you guys remember our conversation about palps. Palps yes. are like fake oh. arms, essentially, yes. that extend out the front around the mouth part. I remember this with the spiders. Uh, yeah, palps. Palps are dope. Palps are like the scary thing. Remember in Lord of the Rings when Shelob was attacking Frodo? Yeah. The giant spider. Yeah, of course. Everyone remembers. 
I think it's Sam fights her off at one point, and he's ho- he's got one hand on her nasty face, <sighs> and then she's got her palps, and they're like, blah, 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 and trying like shove his face into into her mouth. Oh fuck! It gives me nightmares. Fuck that. Anyways. I mean, it wouldn't be an Animorphs podcast if we didn't reference Lord of the Rings at least once. That is true. Shout out Shelob. Uh, so we're on to butterfly mating, actually, which nice. we talked about a little bit already, but let's just go through it step by step. So. There is aerial courtship, so I'm sure uh, a lot of people have been, like, camping or just in general have been outside during, I want to say it's late summer. They've seen butterflies kind of flying in pairs, essentially, and a lot of that is courtship. So they're actually Ah. kind of flying around each other, dropping a lot of, there's a lot of pheromones involved and stuff like that. Uh, They just call it aerial courtship. Uh, I'm sure there's... A lot more complicated stuff involved, but at the same time, there's so many species of butterflies and moths that it's kind of like, is it worth like dissecting every single one? I don't know. Anyways, the actual act of sex, uh, I read multiple times, can last minutes or hours sometimes. <gasps> um, if you know what I mean, I don't know what that means. Can someone explain it? I don't know what it means either. Okay, good. I'm not the Wait. only one. Whew. <laughs> My doctor says it happens to everybody. Um, there are photoreceptors. I, I wasn't like, listening. What, what did you not understand? <laughs> um, it was a sex thing. You wouldn't understand because you've never had sex, remember? This is true. Yes. I didn't. I, didn't yeah. that's why I was so confused when you started talking about it. I was worried right. I didn't understand English anymore. So there are actually photoreceptors. I don't know if you guys remember. Photoreceptors are receptors that can sense light, right? And there are photoreceptors on the genital of the oh my of God. the butterflies and you guys have no idea how hard it was for me to resist asking a hypothetical question of the week that had to do with what if your pubes could see <laughs> but anyways I mean, like that that's a great hypothetical question of the week though <laughs> okay uh so they use these photoreceptors to see each other's genital see in quotes there but basically to lock it in right now uh, the male yes. passes a spermatophore do you guys remember what smatter spermatophore from very the baby sperms episode? right very intimately uh no not quite the so a spermatophore is actually like a, a a sack of sperm instead of individual sperm spermatozoid is the inv- individual sperm inside the spermatophore that's good don't remember, don't remember that. Okay. I love that you guys don't remember fucking anything from these. It's like, I am basically rebirthed at the beginning of each podcast. Um, so the one last thing. So to remove, or sorry, to reduce competition uh, for their chosen females, the male butterfly will actually cover the female in their scent. So essentially just spraying her down with like Axe body spray when he leaves to deter other males. This one's taken, boys. She's got Axe Black sponsorship deals <gasps> accepted. One species of butterfly actually has. Uh, do you guys remember from the bat episode, which was episode twenty-two, where we mm-hmm. talked about uh, the android number ten? Yes. Uh, there was something called a mating plug, where I believe you guys conjectured that the male bat like shoved twigs and mud up the female bat's vagina. I believe. How can I remember that? <laughs> and, like, I didn't even say it, and I remember it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so they leave behind a uh, uh, genital plug, essentially, to make it so that other males wow. can't insert the old wahoo. Wow. Or is nice. the girl part the wahoo? I can't remember. I think the girl part's the wahoo. Okay. Wow, energy's so low today. Fuck you guys. I love Caterpillar. Shout out to anyone else who loves Caterpillar. <laughs> I hey. love it. <laughs> nice authentic all right time for hypothetical question of the week if you could pupate and come out the other side as someone else who would that person be now listen to the details because obviously that's pretty broad you don't have to keep your gender or sexuality so you choose that uh you can you can be the exact same Like, basically a clone of someone else, okay? Your brain can also be different. So, like, you can have different brain chemistry in the sense that, like, uh, you no longer have, you know, schizophrenic breakdowns in the middle of the night or something like that, okay? here's Mm. It's it's a more complicated question than you'd think because at first it's like, well, I'll be, you know, basically Clark Kent. But then also, given the choices, is that really who you want to be? So it could be a fictional person. Yeah, man, it could be anything you want it to be. Could I 
just be like God? You can't have anything that a human wouldn't have. So you can't have like magic powers or anything. Well, you know, nice. you know what I'm gonna do is uh-huh. uh, I'm gonna choose Marco uh-huh. because morphing technology is not a magic power. That's a science. Well, okay, you're still a human. I mean, I feel like I shouldn't have to clarify. Yeah, no, that. I'm still a human with morphing powers. Uh, okay, why Marco? <laughs> also, don't take that from me. <laughs> I wanted to take it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Bra- Brayden's percolating on it. What do you got? I think I it's too what many be, choices. Like, I like being me, but if I could be me, with, but with more money, but like mm, you painting wouldn't wouldn't cause that for. No, you know it would what? it would really only be physical difference. I'm just gonna like front load my brain to just uh have pretty much everything I need to um one know how to make a business and two code and then just make myself at least marginally handsome and marginally like charismatic and that's all I'd need to do and then I just start up like make just like a really big idea startup and then yeah yeah i might just i'll just i'll do me but with I would better skin it. and mm-hmm. um better teeth and no adhd <laughs> and then i'll be perfectly fine i think i would be like lucy from that scarlett johansson movie lucy okay she has she magic like, powers oh, wait a minute Mikhail. she doesn't have magic powers she has it magic unlocks po- the potential of her you brain said have you seen I bradley cooper's seminal text limitless i don't think you have i don't think you have okay fine because then, you would I, then i then i front load my accurate. brain to just have magic powers well i already thought of that and the only one person can have it <laughs> Well, my first one was Marco, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go find Mikhail's wife, and I'm going to marry her, because Mikhail, no. being hey. Lucy, isn't going to want to deal with a regular You know what? I'm beyond it. I'm like a supercomputer. Super I'm like black liquid that just like, remember at the end of that movie? That was wild, where she just like seeps into <laughs> the ground. I see yeah. that movie. And then becomes a USB. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't become a USB. She puts all the information in the world on a USB stick. Oh my god. And what? There it. was enough information? There's enough space on the USB. At least use a floppy disk, man. That movie is so dumb but so good at the same time. Uh, anyways, next week we will be talking about Ba Ba Ba, the Animorphs TV series, episode one and two of the first season. Then the next week we'll be talking about episodes three and four. So the following week, it'll be five and six and seven and eight. And after the eighth episode, we're going to jump back into Animorphs, the books, with number 20. And then obviously, we'll go back to our regular schedule with Live from the Gardens after that. After and that, after I am going to be so hot to trot by then. You can find more of our stuff on our podcast page at collectivelegacy.org or. We're also on Twitter and on Tumblr and a little bit on Instagram and a lot on Facebook. Make sure to like, share, subscribe on our iTunes and other uh, and other online presences so that um, we can we can uh, backtrack that with Facebook's very lenient information sharing and then uh, <laughs> and then how to rig and find out how to make you vote for us. Yes. MAGA. MAGA. Mega. Mega. <laughs> For the fan stop. I've been Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden, the cucker fly. <laughs> it's no. Buttercuck. I thought it's we decided not. on this. You know uh, what? Right. No. I'm cuckolding you on Buttercuck. And Butter this Cuck. has been Fanamorphs, <laughs> the Dork Bajir Chronicles. Wow. That <laughs> was my line. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Live from the Gardens, a Fanamore podcast about how to be a convincing Animorphs. If you'd like to correct or clarify any of the poorly researched animal facts in this episode of Live from the Gardens, feel free to contact us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook by searching for Fanamorphs, the Dork Bajir Chronicles. Are you tired of sitting in silence, staring at walls? Do your ears yearn for something more than the sound of your life passing you by? Try Inadmissible, a podcast designed by a leading team of experts in the field of excitementology and non-boringness. On Inadmissible, you'll hear Quinn and Mikhail, two of our bleeding-edge analysts, break down and rebuild the worst ads you've ever had the misfortune to experience. Listen in as they... 
tear apart lackluster emotional tactics. Gather around as they explain why you shouldn't make your product look like a steaming pile of garbage. Poop jokes. All this and more on Inadmissible, a podcast about terrible advertising. For more details, visit collectivelegacy.org. Inadmissible should not be consumed if you are easily offended or your tolerance for immaturity is lower than that of a six-year-old child. Inadmissible may cause fits of laughter so intense your lungs may suffer from burst blood vessels. Consult your doctor before listening to Inadmissible. Inadmissible, a podcast about terrible ads. Brought to you by Collective Legacy, a podcast network.